welcome to day 13 of our 30-day coding challenge from CS and Math. Uh, we are going to kind of do a little bit of a middle school week this week. Not to say that it couldn't apply to other areas, but definitely things that we think fit middle school as well. Uh, today we're going to start a project called Spiral of the Spiral of Theodorus. Um, brings back into geometry the way we started and uh, we wanted something that brought in Pythagorean theorem and possibly even a little trigonometry, which is why we chose this classic. Now, this thing's ordinarily done in a lot of um, middle school classrooms and high school classrooms. So if you just kind of scroll through some of these pictures I found, um, you'd see stuff that's usually taped up on the walls. Some people call it the Wheel of Theodorus, but he's the one credited. If you search Spiral of Theodorus Art, you could find some similar drawings. And we just want to build it. And we were like, you know what? We could probably make this pretty cool uh, right here in Python. So go ahead and get set up. And we are first going to just introduce uh, our basic import turtle. Sorry, import turtle. We're going to stick with that again for today for drawing something geometric. All right, so we've got our first clip of code I just threw in here. Uh, import the turtle and uh, bring in our turtle character. Move forward 50 pixels. And if you run um, the play button, you get just a 50 pixel uh, line. Now, I chose to focus in on this particular uh, creation. I couldn't find validation for what student made it, but that's okay. If I do, I'll definitely share it. So we're going to just look at this first triangle and say, well, we definitely can do that, right? So instead of being one, because one pixel in our screen is going to be tiny, we could have used 100. I just chose 50 kind of randomly because it seemed pretty small. Uh, I would challenge you to say, can you build out this first triangle in your um, Trinket program? Okay, so hopefully you thought to yourself, okay, if we're going to stick with 50, go forward 50. <clears throat> T dot left 90 for the angle turn, so twist up off of the external angle if you were in our first challenge. Uh, exterior angle is 90, so then I'd go up 50. And the question is, how do we go back that distance there? So I've imported some, um, or I've written some new code here. You could update yours to this or keep yours, doesn't matter as long as you're set to this position. And then some of you might have thought, okay, to get back here originally, uh, I could turn you know, t dot left 45, because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. But now if you look, remember, this is only going to turn 45 degrees. The interior angle is 45, but that only turned 45 degrees off of um, horizontal, off of vertical, I guess it was. So we actually need the exterior angle here of 135. And now if you watch, that external turn would turn us back to go home. Or some people might have thought, I'm sorry, and then I could go t dot um, forward, and I would do um, 50 times um, square root of 2, right, is one way we can do that, whatever the base length was of 1 times square root of 2. But remember, if you try that, it would give you an error. And it doesn't know how to do the uh, square root. So last time, if you followed, and you didn't have to, we had to import a math package, a module of math commands. And so the square root command is in that math module. So right now, if I did it this way, I would draw it home. Um, you could cheat this, by the way. Let's say, for example, um, one thing we haven't done is to comment a block of code out. One way you can do that is with... Um, um, one way to do that is with three apostrophes. So this whole chunk of code in red, instead of commenting it out with a hashtag, this whole block of code is currently turned off. So again, if we ran this, now you could be like, okay, well, I could go t dot go to, or we also use set position, and I could say go to zero, zero. Notice the difference. The, ch the arrow direction does not change here. So we went over, and then as it drug back to zero, zero, uh, it didn't do this extra math. Now we want to include the math, but if you're trying to make this a little easier, there is a way to avoid certain things 
often, right? You don't have to do the math, but we're trying to just dig up the math and have kids experience it. So now the question I have is, if you've done it this way, and I run it again, it's very important. And the reason I left the arrow in here is because you want to think about what direction this is pointing. Now I'd ask you, well, how are you going to build the next triangle off of that? And how would you build the next triangle off of that? And look for a pattern. And I'll pause us right here. All right, one thing you might have intuitively put in was this turnaround, right? Some type of turnaround. So now if you run it, it would just flip it around 180 so it could head back this direction. And then you can just repeat this value, right, and head back that, turn 90. But what you're going to figure out here is it's going to be a lot of code. I mean, we've already got, what, six lines here just for the one triangle. And if we make, let's say, 17 triangles, that's going to be a lot of code. And there's going to be no... You're not going to be using the useful pieces of uh, programming uh, variables and logic. So what I want to do is bring it again down to the um, essentials of programming and say, if I look at this pattern, what's, what is changing and what is staying constant? So maybe you'd want to stop and pause right now and say, in this progression, in this pattern, what do you stay, see staying constant? And what do you see being dynamic or changing? Hopefully you're saying that uh, this 90 degree angle is staying constant. And if you look at this more broad picture, all of these outside lengths are just staying one. So one of the legs is actually staying constant. Now for us, it's 50 pixels the way we programmed it so far. Uh, and this, but this is 90 here. So we have two things staying constant. Uh, this is changing though. And the, the original travel length of the, uh, of the longer of the two legs is changing um, the angle that you're going to have to turn up here isn't going to be uh, 135 all the time it's going to constantly change and this hypotenuse length is going to change so we're going to need variables and um, i think what i'll do maybe is set you up with some variables and leave it off there before i do that i just want to say this is a great project in creativity so i don't want to take away from like if you're running this in a math classroom what a great project we've done this one and kids love it so i don't want to get away from that but usually if you think about what kids are actually doing here when they draw this they just measure let's say an inch they have to use a protractor and measure that 90 measure up an inch and then here they're just connecting sure they see the pythagorean theorem but they're never actually let's say running it or writing it down you know what i mean then they just then they just uh take their protractor measure 90 up there draw a length of one connect measure 91 connect measure 91 connect so there's a pattern but they're not actually calculating any pythagorean theorem or anything like that sure they might uh do it for a couple but then they'll see a pattern and just carry it out but it is rich it is good we're just trying to say well you could make this uh, on a program um, and i'll give some suggestions tomorrow is what you could do with it if you were going to do that so let's go back here and what we're going to want to do is we're going to introduce some variables so let's call the legs a a gets this b gets this um now i'm going to call b this second length <coughs> actually yeah if i think about it i usually want a to be the smaller so this is going to be the smaller a and b are interchangeable in the pythagorean theorem maybe i'll call, I'll call the a value like how big is this what scale is it so i'm going to make that a variable like a equals scale and well you know what i'm going to make b scale and the reason that is is because then we can just do it alphabetically travel a first then travel b so b will be this constant however pick how many pixels i want to make that so these 50s those will become uh, the scale. So why don't we make, yeah, I guess we could just say B is 50 for now. I might change that to scale later. I don't know. For some reason, I kind of like that in my head. But these 50s where we're traveling, those would just become um, Bs. And then this um, where we traveled, remember this hypotenuse? That will actually become um, the first leg of the next triangle, right? So the first longer of the two legs so if i cut this and paste it here that would be our first travel the next time right so 
we're going to want that to start off with a length here of not 2 for our first triangle. We want that to be like a length here was just 150, right? So I want to actually make another variable. Let's just for now call that length. I might change that later. I'm just trying to think of a good word. And then I can make this here called length. And the re again, the reason I'm doing that is because now I can increment that up. I could be like, okay, make that the square root of two, 1, make that the square root of 2, and, and so on. So this will be a good place maybe where we can um, finish up. And we can just say, let's go travel A first, then we're going to travel, I think I had deleted that out of there, B. And let's just paste this back in there to end for today. Um, so if I run this, I at least have some uh, variables introduced, and we can pick up from there tomorrow. Thanks.